The number one risk for insulin resistance or even diabetes is not just consuming a bunch of sugar, especially for people over the age of 40. See, after the age of 40, some things change and risk factors start to change quite a bit. As a matter of fact, when people are under the age of 40, you look at some of the research and it shows risk factors for full-blown diabetes being, well, pre-diabetes, which is kind of interesting as a risk factor, but things like hypertension and even BMI, those things all stack up really powerfully towards insulin resistance. But as people start to get older, it changes. So let's talk about what this risk factor is for people over 40. Down below, there's a link for Organifi's Red Juice. So what this is, is a way for you to get your fruits, your vegetables in with only a couple of grams of carbs. Okay, so what it is, is a blend of different fruits in a powder form, in a freeze-dried form. Really, really cool stuff. They also have a green string too, but I'm just a big fan of the red string because for me, I'm always trying to get a bunch of polyphenols, a bunch of antioxidants in, but I typically don't eat a ton of carbs. So it doesn't typically make sense for me to eat 150 grams of fructose from fruit, even though I love fruit. So Organifi's Red Juice just makes it possible. But if you wanna do more of the greens route and get more of your veggie greens in, that's an option for you as well. They also have turmeric drinks, they have chocolate drinks that are all full of ashwagandha, things like adaptogens, things like antioxidants and polyphenols. So that link down below will save you 20% off. You're gonna use code THOMAS2023. Again, code THOMAS2023 gets you 20% off using that link down below. So these risk factors that I was talking about were actually published in the journal Lancet. It was a large scale study. They took a look at 93,000 people to identify different diabetes risk. And what they found is over the age of 40, the biggest risk factor ended up being sleep quality. Now, before you turn off this video because you got the answer, I'm gonna share with you ways that you can improve sleep quality over the age of 40, specifically knowing what we know about type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. So we know that stress can lead to higher levels of blood sugar. We know that stress is not good. We know that stress can lead to visceral fat. But in essence, poor sleep is just stress. Obviously, there's memory issues, there's brain issues, but physiologically speaking, it's just stress. It is a stressor. So all the same things that apply with stress apply with sleep deprivation too. But there's really, really good news. It does not take long to actually improve the metabolic damage that occurs from poor sleep. This doesn't mean that you can undo a lifetime of bad sleep, but as we get older, it's normal for our sleep duration to decrease. If you look at the data, as we get older, we do sleep less and less and less. Now that's lifestyle inflicted, but it's also just part of life. Our sleep demand sort of decreases, even though it seems like it's increasing. We have kids, things like that. We just want sleep. We crave it so bad, but we're not getting it. Well, there's a study that took a look at seven to 14 day sleep extension interventions. And what that means is they had subjects extend their sleep through a controlled intervention where they basically gave them the ability to sleep in a little bit for seven to 14 days. That's all it took to see a marked difference in their insulin sensitivity and their overall glucose tolerance. They handled glucose better. So as we get older, there's a number of different things that make us less insulin sensitive. Our decreases in muscle mass, our decreases in activity, our decreases in testosterone, lots of little things that stack up. But sleep seems to be the one that drives these even more. So all we need is seven to 14 days. But what can we do to improve our sleep that's gonna help us metabolically? The first one might not be an attractive option. Okay, this is one that I wanna address and I wanted to do a separate video on. It's getting a divorce, a sleep divorce. And what that means is if you are a couple, married, not married, whatever, if you're a couple and you sleep together and you find that you wake up in the middle of the night and then you have a hard time falling asleep because the other person's moving or vice versa, little things, getting up to pee. Dr. Matthew Walker has been talking about this recently. He's a huge sleep expert. You've probably seen him on all kinds of different podcasts. What a sleep divorce is is where you're simply just sleeping in separate beds. Think about it, it doesn't really matter. What matters is your conscious time and how you interact with each other. It doesn't matter if you're unconscious next to each other in a bed. So that's thing number one, just consider it. I've done it and it changed my sleep dramatically. Now the other things that you can do, more pragmatic things, increasing protein content a little bit before bed. First of all, this is gonna have a double whammy effect. It can modulate glucose, which is going to be good for insulin resistance, okay, but it also is going to increase available tryptophan levels. You don't need to have it right before bed. 
I recommend not eating within three hours of bed with the exception of like a 20 or 25 gram bolus of protein, maybe an hour before bed. By increasing circulating tryptophan, you can help produce potentially more melatonin and get a little bit better sleep. Another thing that you can do is try wearing an Aura ring. So I wear an Aura and a Whoop, okay? But I find that the Aura is really, really good for sleep, whereas the Whoop is a little bit better for just overall activity and what they call strain. But Aura does claim that a lot of people that start wearing an Aura start improving their sleep. And I know it's made a big difference for me because it's helped me identify sleep hygiene patterns that I need to follow better that ultimately lead to better sleep. So we're all very data-oriented people, we just don't realize it, so I recommend that. Tart cherry juice. Okay, there was a very interesting study with tart cherry juice that found that just implementing it as part of a healthy lifestyle for a few days led to an 84-minute increase in sleep duration in a controlled setting. So 84 minutes of more sleep by adding a quarter cup to a half a cup of tart cherry juice because of the melatonin content and the tryptophan content. Magnesium before bed, 500 milligrams of magnesium, like dimagnesium malate or magnesium glycinate is very, very good. Chamomile, also really good over the age of 40. And the reason I say this is a lot of people I talk to, especially in their 40s, like when they're still under a lot, a lot, a lot of stress, like 40s and 50s, Chamomile binds to a benzodiazepine receptor, and there's been interesting research that suggests that it can improve general anxiety disorder because it's acting almost like a benzodiazepine pharmaceutical, which means it's making you more sedated. And it doesn't negatively impact sleep quality. You're still getting good slow wave sleep, you're still getting good sleep duration. So that might be a good thing to bring in if you're kind of just not sleeping well because you're stressed. And the other thing is remembering that you can make up sleep. So if you don't sleep well during the week, give yourself a license to sleep in on the weekends. Or you can even do something crazy, like go get a hotel one night a week and allow yourself to sleep in because you can make up sleep to a certain degree. Okay, another thing you wanna pay attention to, which I mentioned in another video about this, is try stacking as much of your sleep before midnight as you can. The earlier you go to sleep, the more benefit you might get from your sleep during those early hours. So front-loading your sleep is something that Dr. Andrew Huberman has talked about a lot. Okay, if you go to bed at midnight and sleep till 8 a.m., that very well might not be as beneficial as going to bed at 9 p.m. and getting up at 5 a.m. That same eight hours of sleep is different depending on when you actually go to sleep. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I hope this helps you sleep. I'll see you tomorrow.